Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Well, those are famous lines, and that's sort of Christ the hippie, right? It's like, hey, let it all hang out. That's an old phrase. Do your thing, and everything will come to you. And these lines have been interpreted in that manner many times. But that's seriously not the proper interpretation. Because there's a kicker with this injunction. And the kicker is this. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's a lot different than the hippie thing. Right? Because the, there's a very, very, very interesting idea here. It's, it's certainly one of the most profound ideas that I've ever encountered. Um, and the idea is this, is that if you configure your life... So that what you are genuinely doing is aiming at the highest possible good Then the things that you need to To survive And to thrive on a day-to-day -day basis will deliver themselves to you That's a hypothesis and it's not some simple hypothesis, right? Because it, what it basically says is if you dare to do the most difficult thing that you can conceptualize Your life will work out better than it will if you do anything else. Well, how are you going to find out if that's true? Well, it, it's a Kierkegaardian leap of faith. There's no way you're going to find out whether or not that's true unless you do it. So, no, no one can tell you either, because just because it works for someone else, I mean, that's interesting and all that, but it's no proof that it'll work for you. You have to be all in in this game. And so the idea is, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It's like, that's actually a fairly important Caution when you're talking about not having to pay attention to what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear It's like What it's essentially saying is that those problems are trivial in comparison And the probability is that if you manifest yourself properly in the world that those things will come your way Is extraordinarily high and I believe I believe that that's exactly right I mean I I've, I've watched people operate in the world and I would say that there is no more effective way of operating in the world than to conceptualize the highest good that you can and then strive to attain it. There's no more practical pathway to the kind of success that you could have if you actually knew what success was. And so that's what this, that's what this sermon is attempting to, to posit. It's like... In, in the story of Pinocchio, you know, what happens at the beginning of the story of Pinocchio is that Geppetto wishes on a star. We talked about that a little bit. And so what Geppetto does is align himself with the metaphorical manifestation of the highest good he can conceptualize. And say, he says, he, he, makes, a, he makes a commitment, let's say. He aims at the star. And for him, the star is the possibility that he can take his creation, a puppet, Right, whose strings are being pulled by unseen forces and have it transform into something that's autonomous and real. Well, that's a hell of an ambition. You know, and we're wise enough to put that in a children's movie, but too foolish to understand what it means. It's such an interesting juxtaposition that, that we can both know that and not know it at the same time. You can go to the movie, you can watch it, and it makes sense. But that doesn't mean that you can go home and think, well, I know what that meant. Well, people are complicated, right? We exist at different levels, and all the levels don't communicate with one another. But, but the movie is a hypothesis, and the hypothesis is there's no better pathway to self-realization and the ennoblement of being than to posit the highest good that you can conceive of and commit yourself to it. And then you might also ask yourself, and this is definitely worth asking, is do you really have anything better to do? And if you don't, well, why would you do anything else? 
Therefore, take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I spent a long time trying to figure out what that meant, too, because it's another one of those lines that can easily be read as pro grasshopper and anti ant. You know, you remember the old fable of the grasshopper and the ant? Maybe not. I'm not going to tell it, but the ant works and the grasshopper fiddles and. The ant has a pretty good time in the winter and the grasshopper dies. And so, this is like a pro-grasshopper line. But it's not, because it says something else. It says that, if you orient yourself properly, and then pay attention to what you do every day, that works. And it, I actually think that that's in accordance with, with what we have come to understand about human perception. Because what happens is that, the world shifts itself around your aim. Because you're, you're a creature that has an aim. You have to have an aim in order to do something. You're an aiming creature. You look at a point and you move towards it. It's built right into you. And so you have an aim. Well, let's say your aim is the highest possible aim. Well, then, so that sets up the world around you. It, it organizes all of your perceptions. It organizes what you see and you don't see. It organizes your emotions and your motivations. So you organize yourself around that aim. And then what happens is, the day manifests itself as a set of challenges and problems and if you solve them properly then you stay on the pathway towards that aim and you can concentrate on the, on the, on the day and so that way you get to have your cake and eat it too because you can, you can point into the distance, the far distance and you can live in the day and it seems to me that that's that makes every moment of the day supercharged with meaning. That, that's how, because if everything that you're doing every day is related to the highest possible aim that you can conceptualize, well, that's the very definition of the meaning that would sustain you in your life. Well, and then the issue is, well, back to Noah. Well, all hell's about to break loose and chaos is coming. It's like when that's happening in your life, you might want to be doing something that you regard as truly worthwhile. Because that's what will keep you afloat when, when everything is flooded. And you don't want to wait until the flood comes to start doing that because if your ark's half built and you don't know how to captain it, the probability is very high that, that you'll drown. Hey there, thanks for listening. Tough Love Motivation is a passion project of mine and every like, comment and subscribe really helps the channel out. If you enjoyed this video or get something from it, please consider smashing that like button or even give a subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks.